farmers really have a big place in renewable energy. We have two young kids that we look at the future for them. This is what we have, we have wind. Renewable energies, that's the way it's gotta go from now on. Any trust that we've had in any of these people has come through Horizon. We wanna be part of the community and be here for the long haul and be a good neighbor. I'm Sandy Rundy, and I'm at the Pioneer Prairie Wind Farm. And we've been watching the turbines come in, the groundwork be done, and it's all been exciting. When we first started, we had a, a meeting in our garage and just invited our, our local, local landowners in a boundary of, I think it was five or six miles. We explain who we are, what the development process entails, we discuss everything from the process of developing a project and looking for the windy site and where we would generally look to put turbines. We provide some information about a basic power sale structure, what revenue they would expect to achieve. And then we talk about the development process and the studies that we conduct throughout the development phase. Once we've signed an agreement with the landowner, we start a whole variety of studies. Um, Starting with, of course, testing the wind, and we install what we call a met pole, which is a six to eight inch steel pipe, which tests the wind at various heights. And at the same time, we perform a whole array of environmental studies, um, habitat studies, wildlife studies, wetland studies, cultural resource studies, to really ascertain whether or not this is the right place for a responsible wind project. And then we also look at what we can do to minimize the impacts that a project might have. While that's going on, we'll also, we'll also begin um, an iterative process, a layout process, where we'll work you know, together with our engineers, with the landowner, you know, we'll have a map, we'll be out in their property, and we'll say, here's where we look, we'd like to put turbines, we'd like to put roads, and we have a very iterative conversation, and we get their agreement on where we'd actually like to put facilities. The big thing was, is they agreed to put the roads in straight instead of at angles in our fields, and so there's not too much impact on the farming because you don't have all those point rolls. That's really important to the farmer. I had a certain amount of expertise in those contracts because I have gone through them with a fine tooth comb and thought of every little thing. I didn't trust just a lawyer to do it. And there were things that I wouldn't like and, and so we marked them and there was never anything that they rushed me through. They were things that I could live with, and then some of the things were things I couldn't live with, in which case they found a ways that they could meet my needs. Well, they walked us through it the whole way, and, and you know, we were part of the process the whole way. And so, I mean, that, that helped us, uh, you know, overcome any concerns that we would have, you know, in the process at all, that they made sure that the landowners were involved in everything. One of the things that distinguishes Horizon from some of the other developers uh, that are active in the upper Midwest is, is the interest in developing, owning, and operating a wind farm over, over the life of the project. So there's a long-term interest in the project. The projects are developed with that in mind. Uh, relationships are built with that in mind. I will be told by landowners, I just wanted to make sure that you weren't a fly-by-night person. Um, so the fact that we've been there for over three years and I've been talking to some of the same people for four years means something to them. Uh, there are a lot of people that sort of the traditional gold rush mentality that come out, see the dollar signs and they go away quickly and so people want to know that you're serious, you, um, you need to be committed, you need to have a long-term commitment. first stages of construction. We've got a lot of our earthwork done. A lot of component parts are starting to show up. We have a construction period that starts in uh, late spring and finishes uh, in early winter. The actual construction starts with um, in farm areas pres preserving topsoil, st uh, stripping the topsoil off where we're going to build access roads and turbine foundations um, and then coming in with uh, usually a geofabric material and rock to uh, create our access roads. Um, and then we would excavate the uh, turbine foundations and um, place the concrete for those turbine foundations and backfill. And that gets it ready for the delivery of the turbine components to the foundation. 
the erection process for the uh, turban generally takes on the order of three or four days. Horizon in this project is now part of the community um, and not somebody who's just going to come in and then leave. So it's my personal uh, uh, goal to be able to turn over a project to our operations group where the landowner relations have been established and they're good relations. The thing that distinguishes Horizon, I think, is that, uh, and this is also what I'm told from other landowners, is that we really get, uh, we take an active part in making sure our landowners are happy and that we're, we're meeting their needs and expectations. Typically, if a landowner has an issue, they'll call our office and I'll discuss what the issue is and uh, I'll generally go out and meet them. And uh, it generally involves uh, something at the turbine site and we'll look at it together and uh, come to a resolution. Hey took care of our compaction, or not our compaction, but our crop, uh, what damaged last year. And they, they, they take care of the compaction every year, you know, for three or four years. We've, we've had a few issues uh, when we do our collection system. This is underground, and the fields in this part of the country all have drain tiles. And so we have to cut across these drain tiles, and uh, when they do the work, they, they generally get most of this right, but there's always a few that have to be redone that uh, were possibly missed. So. That's been our biggest challenge, is just getting all the drain tiles repaired this spring that were missed during construction. We've had a really good relationship with them, and it, that's probably the most important thing there is, because uh, you need to be able to communicate with them uh, what you think your problems are, and maybe they should do it different, and they're very good listeners. We really formed a nice partnership with Horizon. A couple of examples, I remember Omar was one of the engineers that came out of Houston, and uh, he came up and he was here all year long. And about once a month, he would come into our school and he would either speak to our high school science classes about uh, the wind energy project or about global warming, or he would go, I remember one time him and another employee of Horizon came and, and they worked with our kindergarten class and they made the little pinwheels and they showed how pinwheels work and how that compared very closely to how a wind turbine works. There is another company in the region right now that is currently installing wind turbines. Uh, they've never stopped here. They've never stopped to see our school. They've never stopped to uh, introduce themselves. They've never asked about our school. That's so much different than Horizon. With Horizon, they were here. The relationship that we have with landowners is critical to Horizon. It's very important to us at the corporate office. It's very important to the developers out in the field. It's very important to the landowners themselves. We look at the relationship that we have to build our wind farms as a long-term partnership. First and foremost, the landowners that allow us to use their land are granted benefits in the form of royalties. They receive payments when we actually sell the power. And even before we're selling power, we lease their land, so they're receiving payments for just the, the use of their land to develop the project itself. There's also payments made to neighbors within a wind farm, so even those folks who don't have wind turbine site on the property stand to gain from the project being successful. Well, they created a community package so that everybody gets something. And that's pretty much what held everything together in this one here, throughout all the competition and everything else that they've had to go through. The people of this community, they're going to stay together no matter what happens. There's tax base generated, taxes for local schools, fire and emergency services, and the, the tax base is typically a property tax. In some states like Minnesota, it's a production-based tax, but that all flows back to the local communities. Um, and then there's the, the economic development um, that occurs by having a, uh, you know, a $200 million capital investment made in, in a local community. The economic boost of this, of, of just pre-construction or whatever you want to call it, now the phase that we're in, it, your local stores go from $1,000 days to $3,000 mornings with the, the 250, 300 people that are here doing everything right now. During the construction, they, they employed so many people. And I know a lot of locals got extra jobs, and uh, I know the, the rock quarries around here got a lot of extra. As you can see around us, there's a lot of rock here that they had to put on these roads, and so it helped those businesses out and greatly and helped the economy out here 
in our small little town, which, and otherwise we'd never see, you know, money coming into this this part of our country here for as, as much as Horizon has been able to bring it in for us. They've been here for generations. You know, many of them third and fourth generation, and they may still be farming with their fathers and with their sons or daughters. So they're looking at, you know, what are we going to do that makes sure our legacy continues? And so I think that they, you know, they're looking at, I want to have a school in my district that gets some money from this. I want to make sure that um, my little community continues to have a bank, a grocery store. They want to make sure that they're doing their part. And that was, that came across so strongly for me that this is not, about, not so much about, am I taking care of the, um, the electrical grid and the, the whole state of Minnesota? but am I taking care of what I know my community to be and I want it to be in the future? It takes a little bit of a leap of faith and I think a strong commitment to the cause of what, you're, what you see doing. Um, alternative renewable energy, we've got to get there all over the place. And we've got wind. We wasn't sure about it, but we, we toured, went down to Joyce, Iowa and checked them out and uh, everybody was happy there and I thought it was a good deal. I would recommend them to anybody. There was landowners that gave us the reaction that if we couldn't do it with Horizon, we weren't going to do it at all. Mm -hmm.